Hey everyone, Dan Takasha here. Today, Friday US time, we saw the NASDAQ fall 2.62% again. The NASDAQ has fallen about 11% just over the past couple months. This has been a big move in the market and what's actually happened this week has a lot to do with earnings. And this is the crazy part. Earnings for the big tech stocks, usually called GAFA, Google, Alphabet, Facebook, Amazon, they were most part, they were very good. Then why did the NASDAQ fall so much? What happened? And is it going to keep falling further? How much further? And what you should do with your money? I'd like to try to summarize all of this in a 10 to 15 youtube video today for those of you new to my channel my name is dan i'm a former wall street guy please see the below description area as to who i am and i uh, would very much appreciate if you subscribe to my channel going forward i just started this channel this english channel a few months ago it's brand new i started the separate japanese channel in january so i appreciate your support today i want to summarize what's going on in three topics number one let's talk about the earnings that came out this week what happened why did the market fall why did these stocks fall even though the earnings were so good? Then go into number two with the charts. How much is each stock going to keep falling? How much more is each stock going to keep falling? Let's look. Number three, what should you do with your money? Probably a lot of people watching this video own some part of tech companies or they have exposure to it through their retirement accounts, ETFs, mutual funds, etc. So I'm going to give you guys some advice on what I think you should let's get started first and foremost let's talk about these earnings here the earnings came out for a lot of the big companies this week in the tech sector and this is what affects the nasdaq index the nasdaq index the nasdaq 100 if you see the components here the largest weights are apple amazon microsoft facebook alphabet alphabet is google this is usually called gafa or sometimes it's called fame or fang or there's so many different acronyms but it's basically these six companies are very very big apple amazon microsoft facebook apple and then these all actually reported earnings over the past one or one and a half week and this is what's really affecting this market now let's first start with good news google google reported earnings that were actually quite strong they reported revenue 46.17 billion for the three months end of September, 14% increase from the same period last year. Net income was 11.2 billion. Uh, also, this is blowing past the analyst estimates. Very, very strong ad revenue, especially when average revenue, there was a lot of cautious, uh, I think, overtone in ad revenue given the fact that uh, last quarter we saw ad revenue was actually down especially uh posted first revenue decline in history uh last quarter and regarding this i think expectations were a little bit tepid for google as a result and then as a result of this the stock price the stock price in google actually did pretty well uh the price even though the market was falling the price for, uh, went up 3.4 percent it was actually up even more close to seven eight percent and then friday ended up on the day up 3.4 percent now let's move on to the next one amazon 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 reported numbers and its sales growth skyrocketed 37 percent way past analyst estimates very very big around amazon reported 96.1 billion in revenue this is just such an enormous amount. And Jeff Bezos came out saying that he expects fourth quarter to be in the norm of somewhere around 112 billion due to the holiday season. So these are big numbers, way past analyst estimates, also based on an EPS basis as well. EPS is earnings per share, guys, or revenue or uh, earnings. So why did the thing, why did this, why, why did the stock actually go down? The reason being is there was no uh, the tepid profit forecast forecast was not good overall if we look here <clears throat> fourth quarter operating profit would fall between 1 billion and 4.5 billion below the 5.5.8 billion street estimate so this is the part here way below analyst estimates and it's not currently even though the third quarter was good fourth quarter operating profit is looking to be quite low which is interesting given the fact that their revenues are going up 
indicating that their costs are probably going much higher so this is the reason why the stock did not do quite well on friday and on friday we saw the price of amazon sank 5.45 percent now let's look at apple apple also reported blockbuster earnings uh they were slightly past wall street expectations but pretty good eps came at 73 cents versus the uh, street estimates of 70 and revenue was 64.7 billion uh so versus the 63.7 billion so a little bit better than expected but the reason why the stock still didn't do well was two number one here we see that iphone sales iphone sales were down 20 percent year over year and the street when i say the street i mean the market is very very focused right now on the new iphone iphone 12 and the iphone 12 there wasn't that much guidance as well there was a lack of guidance not only do we see the iphone sales were down 20 percent year over year for the existing iphones but for the new iphone 12 there was a lack of physical first quarter 2020 guidance and the analysts could not get a hint of how the uh, stock is projected to go and how sales are projected to go for the iphone 12 the market does not like uncertainty they like clarity they should have said something regarding given some estimate and they didn't this is what the market used as an excuse to sell off and we saw looking at apple apple was also down a 5.6 percent as well quite a big figure this was also hit next let's look at let's see here facebook facebook was a very interesting one because they really had i thought third earnings all across the board uh, we're seeing here Facebook two, 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 reported 21.5 billion in revenue the third quarter, third quarter easily beating the analyst estimates of 19.8 billion. Uh, but however, I think what the market was really focused on was the decline in daily active users for U.S. and Canada. So this is a good gauge of how many people are really using Facebook going forward. And this we saw a decline in the US and Canada down 196 million from 198 million in the second quarter. So the biggest user base is the US and Canada and the amount of users actually went down. So even though the company's making more money, the number of users is usually a good forward indicator. And I think this is what's uh, sort of keeping the market cautious. And regarding this, we saw Facebook actually got clobbered 6.3% in the market as well finally we see here microsoft microsoft actually reported a few days ago and microsoft also reported very solid earnings actually nothing really bad at all uh it's also much better than expected roughly about 37.2 billion in earnings uh better than the streets estimates of 35.7 billion uh two, 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 two. uh however what we see here the main problem was again the guidance he noted that they expect revenue in the physical second quarter of that gave guidance that was slightly shy of expectations. He noted that they expect to have revenue, uh, 40 billion. Again, this is below estimates. And I think this is what's keeping the market tepid right now is again, it's guidance. Guidance for the next quarter is not gonna come in quite as well as people think. And again, the market used this as an indicator to sell the stock slightly, not much, but slightly. Uh, on Friday however when it did report earnings it did fall on this day quite a bit it fell here on the day that reported earnings about three four percent or so so all these tech stocks we see kind of a similarity here numbers were good but either the forecast was not given or the forecast was below estimate so it's not about now it's the future even for Facebook looking at the number of users this is what's driving the market it's the future and expectations were already very good because second quarter numbers for these tech companies very strong given what happened with coronavirus a lot of people were increasing their usage of these tech companies however third quarter expectations are strong very very high plus the guidance is saying now that for fourth quarter and for next year things are not going to look as juicy as right now and the market is always focused on the future this is what really drove the market down in my opinion so now let's talk about the second part of this video let's do a technical analysis 
how much further are these stocks going to go down and how much further is the nasdaq going to go down now instead of trying to analyze every single stock separately i'm going to try to do this with the nasdaq index overall and looking at the nasdaq index i want to first take a quick look at the etf qqq just to indicate that this is the qqq a nasdaq 100 etf and i just want to take a quick look at the volume here volume is high here it's not quite as high as it was in early september but it is quite high okay now let's do an actual estimate actual uh, analysis of the nasdaq index here now the nasdaq index we're seeing right now it's currently right around eleven thousand, sitting at a very big level and we're seeing that rsi is trending down it's been trending down actually yeah so it's a slight i wouldn't say it's a very strong line there's only two dots here two maybe three dots showing that there is a downtrend in the rsi at the moment we're seeing the macd line is through the signal line again guys if you're not familiar with macd rsi bollinger band any of this technical lingo please see my below description area for my previous videos but looking at this we're seeing clearly that there is a downtrend as well the macd is also seeing a lower top here as well uh, lower top in the charts, lower top in the price, lower top in the RSI, lower top in the MACD all indicate the same that right now it's a medium term uh, weakness in the market at the moment. Uh, right now, the Bollinger Band is sort of medium, indicating the standard deviation, uh, the movement over the last 20 days. It is nothing really big. Uh, now let's look at the positioning. I want to look at the NASDAQ futures market. Futures market indicating very interestingly here. Futures market sold off really heavily uh, in September. September, it sold off big time. And I think that this is probably due to some sort of technical positioning. Uh, we saw the NASDAQ market go down quite a bit in September. And this was when there was a lot of chatter in the market regarding SoftBank being a NASDAQ whale, buying lots of call options, blah, 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 blah. Turns out it actually just wasn't SoftBank. It was a lot of other retail investors as well, buying a ton of options pushing up volatility not just in the nasdaq but also in the overall vix which is the s p market and due to some sort of positioning unwind i think large funds were forced to sell futures and i think selling this futures probably to offset their positioning and options is what happened here with a quick blip down and a quick blip up as we see here for the last few years we've never seen the nasdaq positioning get this low so usually when it's something like this statistically it means that there was some sort of positioning effect i don't think it was necessarily meaning that people were really really bearish on the nasdaq thinking that there people were selling the nasdaq futures that thinking it was going to keep falling i think it was positioning unwind of futures due to uh, probably offsetting with options now uh one last thing i want to look at is regarding the volatility here so volatility is very interesting uh, looking at the overall market volatility, SPY, this is for the S&P 500. Like I've said, the implied volatility has been surging higher here. Now it's back at a level around, uh, let's say, 34 implied volatility, which is around the same level as June 10th. However, when you look at the NASDAQ ETF, QQQ, this is an entirely different story. This <clears throat> still has not broken through the recent September volatility yes september was quite high uh given that a lot of the market movement that happened in september it was really due to the nasdaq stocks options futures unwind so that does explain why it was high here but looking at the charts overall it hasn't really seen a breakout yet to me indicating that there still is there's fear in the market but it's still not huge fear and we can see this by looking at the skew index that right now the indicator to buy puts minus calls it's it is going up it's going up but it's not still i'd say rushing higher like it was in february so again there's fear in the market but i wouldn't say a big amount of fear especially in the etf market so clearly these tech stocks things are getting bad but it doesn't look like people are in a complete panic mode yet so listening to all this number three part of this video what is my recommendation to you on what you should do with your money as usual guys investing is always self-responsibility please make your own decisions at the end of the day and investing long term is generally my advice for most of your money 70 90 percent and then short term 30 to 10 percent the reason why you do both guys it's for times like this when the market goes down usually 
your long-term portfolio is probably going to suffer no matter what even though it's for your retirement account it still hurts to watch this go down and this is why you want short-term investing because this is where you can start making money when the market gets very very volatile now what is my recommendation overall my recommendation overall is that these tech stocks i don't think any of them are a buy to be honest with you not one of them do i really like on the charts uh they all look sort of dangerous especially short term regarding the markets i think they can continue to go down the nasdaq clearly is at a big sensitive level around eleven thousand, but the next level i think is right around ten thousand five hundred uh ten thousand five hundred yeah right around here ten thousand five hundred fifty this is a big level here uh maybe even ten thousand eight hundred this is probably another big level as well so ten thousand eight hundred if it breaks that it'll go to ten thousand five hundred fifty and in that meantime i really don't want to be buying these stocks i'm actually been short selling a little bit and maybe as a hedge if you're short selling and short selling maybe as a hedge you want one buy now which stock are you going to buy this is the key and this is sometimes when you use correlation and what i think you should be being interesting by is something that's uncorrelated with the nasdaq so when the overall market is falling what's a stock that's not going to be falling as much that's still a tech company when you look at the correlation here for example microsoft versus the nasdaq super high right now amazon versus the nasdaq super high correlation right now facebook versus nasdaq actually not quite as high 0.28 apple versus nasdaq very high no surprise and google versus nasdaq super low 0.24 or so so looking at this i actually think a good strategy is to maybe short a little bit each of apple facebook amazon microsoft these big companies and then as a hedge buy a little bit of google google not only did it have good earnings good forward estimates even for the future the guidance was good this is what was lacking in the other companies but more importantly the correlation is low indicating that if the market for some reason decides to continue going down according to right now the statistics the correlation says google shouldn't go down quite so much so my general recommendation depending on your uh investment sort of uh time horizon i'd say short term and also your experience if you have a high experience level maybe you want to short these gafa companies except for google buy google as a hedge again guys if you're a complete beginner then maybe just do nothing and watch as right now is extremely volatile so please make your own judgment on that end thanks so much guys for watching my video if you enjoyed the content please press the like button below and if you haven't subscribed please also press the subscribe button below and follow me going forward thanks guys i hope you guys have a great weekend stay safe with coronavirus with halloween hope you guys are safe hope you guys are well see you guys soon